So I've recently purchased 15 kits off of AliExpress, all for like, you know, 50p to a pound, two pound, three pound each. So here we've got a four bridge diode rectifier, which converts AC to DC. So I believe it takes in an AC input of three to 18 volts, as you can see there, and then it will output that into DC. I'm not entirely sure how these work in the sense that like I've studied full bridge rectifiers. I'm actually currently studying it now. I was just reading for a chapter on it. And so I kind of have an idea how these work kind of, but like, for example, I know I've got a capacitor here, which is going to smooth out the output. Uh, we've got an LED here. I'm not sure what that's doing. Probably just an indicator. So we just got terminals for input and output. So it seems like there's not really much to this. Just a basic, really basic kit. But the purpose of me doing all of these kits is that I firstly want to get better at soldering. You know, I want to I want to be very good at soldering. I also want to get a lot better at understanding just how actual physical circuits work and dealing with physical printed circuit boards, which might seem crazy, but considering I'm now learning my whole electrical engineering degree online, which absolutely sucks as a side point, but then I'm just I'm becoming like a simulation engineer whereby all I'm doing is running simulation tests and I'm not actually dealing with physical stuff so I'm really keen to to get good at dealing with physical stuff here so yeah the purpose behind this is for me to get better and then I'll take you along the route, along the journey with me as well now one thing I've been having some trouble with is for the last hour I've been trying to figure this out how I should go about putting in the AC signal 3 to 18 volts because obviously I can't just connect, I can't just input from the input my mains from a plug or something. It's a bit tricky to figure out. What I've also done is I've actually ordered a transformer. So I've ordered this transformer, which is like for halogen lamps. So it takes in 240 volts AC and outputs 12 volt AC. So hopefully this should be okay. It cost me 4.99 for this. I've actually also ordered a full on transformer as well, which is a seven foot seven pound 39 and again it's the exact same thing 220 volt uh input ac and then outputs 12 volt or 24 volts i'm a bit concerned to use this but then the previous one this one seems a little bit small do you know what i mean so i mean it's got more than enough reviews so hopefully it should be okay but yeah so i've ordered both of those obviously you need to be able to put in the ac input and there aren't obviously any instructions or anything on how to do that. And I couldn't really find anything simple, like a simple way to input AC into a circuit board. So yeah, that's gonna be tricky. I'll show you the listing for it here on AliExpress. So you can see 46 cents, which is like you know 38p or something for me. It's got estimated delivery 30 to 50 days. It actually only took uh, two weeks to ship to me. So input AC, three to 18 volts. Uh, large output current one amp what we'll do is then we'll solder this first because that's obviously the easiest part you guys can laugh at me soldering then we'll talk about how it works I'm gonna take a bit of a like try and figure it out make sure I understand it which I think I do I think I should be able to understand how this works it's nice that I've got a schematic as well so we'll solder it first then we'll talk about how it works and then I'll show you guys how I go about powering it, which hopefully I figure out. Okay, so let's get into soldering it. Excuse my uh, dirty mat. I think um, I have this philosophy whereby, you know, I want all my uh, work surfaces and all the rest of those things to be dirty since it makes me feel like I actually get stuff done <laughs> as opposed to having a clean place. All right, so let's, um, I suppose we start with the easiest things to solder on first, which would be the diodes and uh, resistors or oh, is only one resistor i mentioned this in a previous video but when you're soldering you should always start with the lowest profile stuff first at least that's what i've been told okay so okay i feel like i should mention this just in case there's a uh, complete noobs that are watching this video but i feel like most of you figure it out so obviously with the diodes then you've got the markings like the silver bit at the top right and then you've got the lines underneath i'll take one out and show you so that, that line is telling you there where to put the silver part. So it goes in like that. So you can put the wall in like that. And then obviously re the resistor doesn't have any polarity. So you don't need to worry with the resistor. Just put it in either way. So put those all in first. And then you can just turn it all over like this. And then that way you just solder them all. 
and then clip them all off. So that took me way longer than it should have. Um, basically, putting them all in like this just caused me problems. There was no, there's no need for me to do that. I should have just done it one at a time, to be honest. And if you watch my function generator video, then you would have seen that basically, oh, I'm quite used a bit too short. But yeah, basically I was using a, a nail clipper to cut them off last time. Um, and then I ordered these off of Amazon. So two of these clippers for five nine nine. Kind of cut that off a bit short, to be honest. All right, so next up we'll do the LED and then we'll do the inputs and output. And then after that, we'll do the capacitor. So the LED is fairly simple. You just got to make sure the longer end of the LED is positive. So you want to put that into where the plus sign is. Like that, you can have it flush. And then yeah, just hold it on. So LED is done and then the inputs and outputs, I don't think there's a difference. Yeah, there's no difference between the two. So just stick either one. So this whole thing took me a lot longer than you know I would like I would like it to. And I think I would I would love to just upload, you know, the full video of me uh doing this and hopefully, you know, you know, when the channel's big enough, I'll do some live streams of me doing this because it's <laughs> it's terrible how long it takes me to do this stuff. But I'm happy with how it's turned out now. So Again, I need to figure out how to power it. That's another problem. But let me just figure out how this works. I'm going to take a look at this uh, side of the board here. Figure out how it works. Once I do, I'll come back to you guys and let you know how this works. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to... I understand how a full bridge rectifier works already. Looking at it, them all you know, in a line like that is a bit confusing. I believe the capacitor is there to smooth out the output for DC... Uh, the resistor maybe is there for the LED. I don't know. I don't know what the, the resistor is doing. Um, yeah, anyways, let's figure this out and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so here's the schematic which I got off of Valley Express. I actually got off the listing itself. And so you can see here you've got the AC input here, AC 0 to 24 volts apparently. And then we're connecting one of the outputs of the AC to D between D1 and D3, and the other one between D2 and D4. Then we've got a capacitor on the output of this rectifier bridge, which is to smooth the output for DC. And then you've got a resistor and an LED, which is, I assume, like an indication LED to let you know when the circuit's on. The only thing is the, the LED is probably not going to turn on. If you're saying that, if they're saying here you can put in 0 to 24 volts, then the LED shouldn't turn on on low voltages. So probably won't turn on until over 5 volts maybe over three volts i'm not sure but yeah and then you've just got a dc output here so what i've done is i've built the same circuit on multisim if you don't know what multisim is it's like what most of us in university use to simulate our circuits so same circuit here i've got a three volt rms 50 hertz ac uh, supply here one going between d d1 and d3 so one uh, output going between d1 and d3 and the other going between d2 and d4 I've got the ground here just because you have to have it as part of the simulation thing. And then you've got the capacitor on the output. And between them, I've got the LED and the resistor. The only reason why I've put the LED and the resistor here, even though on this one, this schematic here, they've got it the other way around. On the schematic that they sent me by paper, which you saw earlier, it was this way around. So I built this, I just did it this way. But it doesn't make a difference to the actual function of the circuit. Okay, so on my paper that came with the circuit, it says 3 to 18 volts, even though here it says 0 to 24 volts. So I've got it at 3 volts RMS. So if we run this now, and then we can use a voltage probe and stick it on the output of the capacitor. And so we can see we've got 3 volts DC. Voltage DC is 2.97 volts. So we can see the output, DC output on this capacitor here is 2.97 volts. Now, the really good thing about this kind of circuitry is if I pause it here now and I come and grab an oscilloscope, so a Tektronics oscilloscope, I can stick that here. Then I can ground the oscilloscope. If I do channel one, let's do let's take a look at our our input first, which is our AC. All right, 
So then if I run that, have a look here. So now this is cool because it's a literally, it's a full on oscilloscope simulation, which I really like. So you turn it on and we can see here our channel one, slow down. So this is our sine wave input, right? Now, if I click on measure, here we've got the input, which is 50 hertz, and we've got 4.24 volts peak to peak, which is uh, 3 volts RMS, right? Now, let's take a look at the output. So, if I stop the simulation, close this, and then select here, so select the output here, run it again, and then now we need to turn on channel 2. And there you go, you can see that straight line there. That line there is our channel two, which is our DC. You can see it's this nice, steady three volts. Click measure again. Have a look at the, the difference between the frequencies. It's important. And then now nicely we can compare. So you see here we've got our channel one, which is our input, and channel two, which is our output. So you can see channel one's input, even though it's 50 hertz, what the full bridge rectifier does is it doubles the frequency. So it doubles 50 hertz up to 100 hertz. And then you can see here, we've got three volts RMS coming in in the input, and we've also got three volts or 2.97 volts on the output. So it's it's done a perfect job. Okay, so that was it with three volts, right? So let's try it with, because you can see here the LED is not on, which is what I expected to happen. Here that we can use it with zero to 24 volts. So I've ordered a transformer which gives out 12 volts, a physical transformer. So I'm gonna try it, let's try it with 12 volts, see what we get. So now if we run it, we can see here, we've got a voltage DC of 15.4 volts. And you can see the LED is turned on now. In case you didn't notice that there, previously the LED was uh, white. Let me just show you. So if we come back to three volts there. So that shows that the LED is off because when it's on, it gets filled in red. So now if I change it back to 12 volts, there you go, you can see the LED turns on. And at our output, instead of getting 12 volts, we've actually got 15.4 volts. And again, you can still see 100 hertz there. So let's click it here. So you can see that the DC, so they're both on 10 volts per division. So you can see the DC line is actually at the, the peak, basically. All right, and here we go. So you can see we've got our channel 1, 16.9 volts peak to peak. And our channel 2, 100 hertz, 15.4 volts with our DC spy. Let's see what happens when you make it uh, 18. I don't even know what's gonna happen here. 18 volts. So we're getting 23.8 volts. Nice. Yeah, this simulation is really cool. If you um, if you can access it, I don't. I haven't tried like the other ones, like the the spice ones or anything like that. But these, this multisim one's amazing. Okay, so let's see if I can replicate what we've just done here on the actual board. Okay, so I'm looking forward to this working, and I'm hoping it does work. What I'm going to do is I don't have a transformer or anything to step down real AC voltage. So I'm going to use a function generator, which is this cheaper 20 pound function generator, which I got off of eBay. I'm going to put nine volts into it. So what, I sh what I'm expecting is that the output will have hopefully like three volts. So I've got 50 hertz on there. So let's run it. Okay. And then I'm hoping I can get three volts out of this in terms of putting three volts directly into this, right? So what we'll do is I've got this really cool, uh, again, really cheap, I suppose not really that cheap, but really, phone and oscilloscope is cheap, 50 pound oscilloscope and it's, but it's battery powered, which I think is amazing, look at that. <laughs> so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the oscilloscope firstly to the function generator. Let's take a look at our signal that it's generating. So we can connect this to here. So I've already run the, um, Function generator, right? This oscilloscope, this little mini one comes with these mini probes as well, which is nice. So connect that to there. And let's take a look at our output. So I'm hoping we got, if we've got at least three volts, then I'll basically use the sine wave on the function generator to behave like, um, to behave like I've stepped down AC voltage. Okay, so I hit auto. Look at that, yes. And look at that. So, okay, we're getting a voltage peak, uh, max voltage of 2.6 to 3 volts. Now, I can actually turn it up on here. So, let's have a look. There we go. Look at that beauty. So, now we've got 5, let's get 5 volts. There we go. 
you know what you see what i mean like obviously most electronics people will, will crap on the fact that you know this is some cheapo stuff but look this is a really cheap oscilloscope before i got my expensive oscilloscope this was the oscilloscope i was using and for me look it's perfect man eight volts peak to peak uh five volt peak so our voltage rms there is three point uh fluctuating between 3.7 Let's let's maybe get that up to five volts. I think. There we go. So we've got five volts RMS as you can see there. Okay, so we're getting five volts RMS from it's a nice sine wave as well from our function generator. Again, just consider that this is really cheap function generator. And then let's where's our input? So our AC input is here, this top one here. So I'm just going to open these connector points. Is there, so there's no markings for positive or negative because it's just AC input, isn't it? So it doesn't really matter. So we'll connect those in there. And tighten it down. All right. So then now we can connect, and then we should see our LED turn on as well, which is which will be nice. Yes, th th I'm sure that LED is to show it's on. Look at that! Boom. LED's on. <laughs> it's working well, people. It's working well. Much better than I thought. And this is the amazing thing, you know, this is a 50 pen, 50p kit, right? And I practice my soldering. I've learned more about four bridge rectifiers. Now we want to, let's check our DC output, okay? So I just have, I just got my multimeter here. Let's uh, turn on a multimeter. To, so we've got on DC volts, right? So we've got five volts going into it, right? So we should just be able to, so positive, and negative look at that we've got 4.4 4.47 4 4.5 volts output nice let's check our input so we need to change it to uh, ac so we've got like four volts input apparently okay there you go four volts okay so it's got four volts at input and let's change it back to dc and then 4.5 volts output perfect look at that people we made a full bridge rectifier. I mean, we didn't really make it. It's obviously already, <laughs> but we soldered it, and uh, yeah, it works. That's amazing, right? I'm actually quite intrigued to see what would happen if I put in, you know, 18 volts. So I might try that when I get the transformer. But I feel like it's a bit might be might be worth me putting in a bit more time to learn how they work first. But let's see if I can get more. Because I, I saw someone on on the Amazon reviews of this. He said that he uses this because it's a nice small little board. He uses it for his garden lights. So he connects them to mains. And then I don't know how he goes from mains down to... Because this can only take 24 volts AC. Maybe it could take more. But literally on the board there it says... Yeah, it says 0 to 24 there on the board. So, But he said he uses it to step down his mains voltage for his lights to 12 volts. So I'd be intrigued to see if this would actually be usable to me one day. Let's just, I'm just putting up my function area to the max it can go. And then have a look what we got on the output. So we've got, so look what we got there on the output, 6.5 volts. This is probably because uh, I'm only putting nine volts into my function generator and I've got it cracked onto the max uh, that it can go. But it'll be interesting to see if maybe if I use the bigger function generator, which I have actually just got received my bench function generator from AliExpress, which I haven't done a video on yet. But yeah, 6.5 volts on the output there, DC, which is really nice. I'm very happy with this. Let me let me know what you guys think. Um, I think this is a cool little project. My soldering this time around, still quite bad. <laughs> but it's all right. It is what it is. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. I've got a bunch more of these kits and um, I don't want to just do just build, just solder the kit and move on. I'd like to try and get an, a, a deeper understanding as to what's actually happening on the circuits. I feel like hopefully that would help me cement, you know, how it'll help me cement what I'm learning in my modules and in university. So yeah, that's the plan moving forward. If you're into that kind of stuff, subscribe. Leave a like, please, because I don't really get that many likes. So I'd appreciate it if you guys liked the video. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.